Well, Dan Lutz, welcome to the Rocky Mountain Writer Podcast. Thank you, Mark. Good to see you, and I'm glad to be a part of this. Well, thanks for jumping on. And I just want to sort of start out with the fact that it's really, really, really cool that you and I knew each other in our professional lives. I was right. director of uh, communications at Denver Public Schools, and you headed up an amazing school and helped start an amazing school mm -hmm. called the Center for International Studies, if I've got that right. You got it right. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. we Actually, did a first lot of, of four. Yeah. First of four. Exactly. It's become a network, and you have a proud legacy behind you for what you have left behind to the city of Denver and to Denver Public Schools and all the parents and students who benefited from that terrific organization. Well, and actually, um, as a, a brief side note, as we get talking, I'll, that actually has some bearing on my story as a writer. So that's great. That's that great. Whenever. Yeah, well, we'll get into that because... Um, this is a fiction writing podcast, and we're not here to talk about schools and education. We know that we could probably, if we, if we give us half an hour, you and I could probably fix the problems with public education. Well, I'm sure we but could, Mark. We, yeah. We've got other things to talk about. So. That's right. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, and then I was, um, I think, um, surprised to bump into you at a RMFW Colorado Gold Conference mm -hmm. at some point many years ago and um, yeah. have since... Um, had many conversations about your fiction work. So mm -hmm. this podcast is a little bit unusual in that you're um, still in the hunt for how to get your story out there into the world. Yes. Right. But take us back. Let's start with just tell us about the book you have been working on. Give us the, sort of the big picture concept of it. All right. So the big picture is it's a, a, a work about identity in uh, as it relates to an adopted child. And um, it's an international novel and uh, it comes from uh, two things. It comes from my experience with my wife as a Peace Corps volunteer in Afghanistan prior to the Soviet incursion, incursion into the country. And uh, also my long experience on the west side of Denver and particularly with a uh, uh, Latino, uh, our, a lot of, a lot of uh, people from Latino homes in the schools where I served and uh, ultimately designed too. And uh, to um, cultures, macro cultures, I guess, because I, I, I always he hesitate to talk about cultures so inclusively just because I'm very interested into um, individual, um, the culture of an individual. Too. And so that's part of the, the environment of the book that I have written is uh, what, what are the stories uh, um, within really difficult circumstances that come out that where the backdrop are some of the cultural uh, norms and cultural circumstances, historical circumstances. So um so that is, that's it. So the, the uh, part from Afghanistan begins in um, the uh, late 1970s and leads up to the Soviet incursion. Uh, it's a story about uh, two individuals, a, a man and a woman from neighboring villages in an uh, arranged marriage. But the, the man young man becomes enamored with the promise of communism's uh, ability to right the, the economic uh, difficulties of common laborers and farmers. And, um, and he, he, so that was his dream. So uh, as he learned about communism, he becomes a supporter of the communist incursion and um, takes part in some some very um, awful kinds of things because of his because of his uh, passion about um, a better future for the country that is what it was at that time and still is one of the poorest countries on earth. And um, but he alienates the the village where his wife comes from. They're only and this was actually based on villages that uh, that. Uh, I visited while I was in Afghanistan and was 
the guest of, of them several times. It was a very powerful experience for me. So um, I became really connected with uh, some of the students my wife had in a girl's school and uh, some of the adults that, that I worked with uh, during that time as an education su um, um, supervisor counterpart. So um, the woman bears a child while her husband has literally abandoned her. Um, and it talks about her and her survival and um, escape from Afghanistan in the, the heat of that conflict as that, he, as that became uh, more and more intense. So uh, parallel to that survival, and she actually, she escapes. It's an, a story about refugee camps in Pakistan, about uh, sex trafficking, about um, uh, survival and difficulties that lead to her um, um, relinquishing her child. And in, in the middle of her escape, her husband finds out that he has a son and that radically cr creates a shift in what are his priorities and suddenly he realizes that that he has to he has to find his son and of course his wife too so that story um progresses towards the end of the book really in in how that happens and and then it leaves uh, at the end the story of the son's future uh, for the next book. And so this is actually a two book piece of yeah, work. Yeah, and the yeah. second book, the second book is about, um, sorry about that. The second book is about um, the son's adoption to uh, in a very um, unusual kind of adoption, but some things, some situations that justify that for um, a couple on the west side of Denver. And their history is woven into that first book so that th those two stories coincide side by side. Yeah. So that's the general picture. Yeah, yeah. Well, we got to get book one out there in order to get book two out there, right? That's, yep. We, right, right. And so is book one, does that have a working title, Dan? Yes, but um, it, yeah, the, the the head the main title is uh, keychain pendant and it refers to a pendant that a Peace Corps volunteer gave to the girl who was one of her students that becomes the wife in th that story with six interlocking circles and the the tagline is when circle when the circles fall apart. Gotcha. Now is that book one is that told from multiple perspectives? Do you have do you shift back and forth? Right. Okay. Yeah. Good. And and last I talked to you, we chatted in the hall, I think at Colorado Gold a couple of years back. Don't ask me the year because it all kind of blurs together. But right. um, I, it's, it sounds to me like at that point you had one book and you really have decided to make it two, which is probably what I remember was the length was pretty long for that one book. Right. And, and that's been the hang up. And so, yeah. um, and I, it's been, I mean, I have whittled it down, but not nearly enough that people who haven't read it uh, would um, would recommend just in terms of a new writer. Uh, and uh, and that's been that's been hard for me to try and visualize how to do this. The obvious piece to me would be to separate these two stories and put the mm -hmm. the story of the West Side in the second book, but yeah. it's it's so intertwined with the story of the first book in terms of the way I've envisioned it. Uh, I have had a hard time separating it out. And yeah. um, so um, I have to say one of the things that uh, around writing this uh, is I, I do believe in the muse and I've, I had a very powerful experience around this, and I, I'm sure that it has to do with the way we have thought we would want to write a book for a long time, and then suddenly it comes together. But on a Saturday morning in 1998, this entire story um, for the two books came to me in a half an hour. And the only thing that I've changed was that the, the, um, 
the child that this story is about changed from a girl to a boy. And it had to just because of uh, some cultural uh, um, things that were important to reflect in in the nature of how this story yeah, unfolded. Yeah. But it was just powerful. And so while I was still, I mean, um, I think I met you even before I had started the schools. I was um, directing yeah. a magnet program at West High, which yes. is a school on the west side. And so that there are scenes on the west side that are reflected very specifically in that part of the book. And uh, so I would get up on Friday mornings at 4.30 um, so that I'd have, I'd, I'd go out to breakfast somewhere and, and I'd write for an hour and a half before I went to work. And yeah. so part of the 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 difficulty that I have had in in peeling away parts of that to bring it down to size is that, uh, and I, I'm sure this is not new, but uh, this is something that I've told my wife and and she respects me for it. But these characters, because they come out of my experiences so strongly, I have, these characters have been absolutely real to me that I have visited in in with their their joys and with their tragedies so strongly that um i wasn't paying any attention to length i knew what the story was about and i just what took time was to tell it in a way that that really showed the guts of those emotions and those experiences in some way well so i i worked on it for um for many years and then I got nervous because both of my children are adopted from Korea. The story is not theirs, but part of the reason I, I that one of the key things that was important to me about this story was the unknown stories of our children who are adopted before they were adopted. How did what was that all about? And so yeah. this is a story about that. It's not their story, but it's about that. So it took me a long time to finally, I, the book was shelved because I was nervous about that until I finally had an honest conversation. And both of them said, dad, this is your story. Tell it, get it out. Yeah. And it was yeah. still hard because it was, it was sensitive. And I've been really involved in the adoption uh, community, particularly at that time. Uh, anyway, the international adoption community. So yeah. I finally got over that. And that's about when uh, I started paying attention to Rocky Mountain uh, fiction writers, and and uh, so those uh, those conferences were really supportive of of my doing that. And I got in the first uh, uh, writers um, critic critic critique group at one of those conferences. I got some really good feedback, but you know, you in those you submit the first 10 pages, right? Right, right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Out of um, but, what would probably be an 800 page book otherwise, yeah. you know? <laughs> and so, so that was good. And then this last year, year last September, I, I went to another one, did another critique group, got some really good feedback. This time I presented the second um, book and they really liked the way it started out. But, in the meantime, um, I've had been working on a book, uh, an education book about uh, education reinvention. And uh, uh, so I'm working on that. And just I've uh, just uh, joined a, um, a Newsweek's expert forum and I'm writing articles for that. And so so my writer's conundrum now is um, just just getting this book out and yeah seeing what I need to do uh, right. personally, individually, well, so I can get, move ahead. Let, let, me, let me play the role of um, friend and writer, writer friend and say, so have you approached agents? You've sent, you've looked for an agent? I've done some looking and I had some uh, good feedback at, um, I, I, I attended the, uh, agent meets, meetups and had some good feedback. Probably the most positive feedback I got was from someone that uh, uh, was actually, uh, I don't know if broker is the right word, but she she looks for 
uh, authors and uh, books that could be turned into film. And oh. one of the things that that really attracted me, and I, I still need to follow up uh, with her, but it, I, the idea of, you know, this these streaming series now, limited series, yeah, um, has really intrigued me. And I thought, well, maybe that's a place for 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 this work. But um, was that Had Hadley Ramsey? Yes. Yeah, yeah. She she was at Rocky Mountain Fiction Writers Conference this last year, and that's right. her specialty. Yeah, and that's yeah. who I met with that in yeah. that. Yeah, she's terrific. Yeah. Well, have you? How many agents have you queried overall? I really not too many. You know, I I think when I started to face that my my book was too long, then uh, I think I got stuck with my having to fix it. But what I've just been I woke up in the middle of the night once um, about two months ago saying that I should just get it to agents and then they yeah. can help me. How, how long is book one? So single spaced, it's 450 pages or so. How many words is it? About 200. I think it's 235,000. Yeah, that's book one alone. That's right. Yeah. And, and. I mean, just the market is, that's going to be a rare, very rare to find an agent or a publisher who will take that on. The probably, and this is one guy, one guy saying this only, but I think the first thing you'll hear is break it down again to 100, 110, 120,000 words at the most. And that probably sounds daunting to you, I imagine. But yeah. that's what yeah. that's what the market unless you're John Irving or somebody like that who regularly yeah. can publish a couple hundred thousand word book, it just doesn't happen that often for first time writers. No, I, so, I well, and, yeah. and actually, you, um, I think when I first started to face the reality of this uh, um, was when I talked to you about it at that Rocky Mountain Fiction Writers those yeah. years ago. Yeah. So that's that's kind of where I got where I yeah. stalled out. So you have a big you have a big conundrum or challenge mm -hmm. to either. I mean, this is again just one guy's opinion, but it seems to me you're either going to have to meet the marketplace, what the market will bear, mm -hmm. just the sheer cost of publishing a two hundred thirty five thousand word book is something most publishers won't take on because that's going to demand a retail price of probably 35 or 40 bucks yeah. to make any money. Right. So there's just some realities there. And if, if the writing is great, which it sounds like you've gotten great feedback on the writing, then is there a way to, maybe this is a four or five book series about these characters and maybe there's a natural place to break at the, maybe maybe it's a simple, simply a matter of saying at around the 100,000, 110,000 word mark, of what you've got now, maybe there's a way to just kind of wrap, leave a little cliffhanger, leave a little tension, and call it, call it book one of four or five parts, and get it out to agents and get it out to, you know, forty okay. or fifty agents. Maybe get it out to forty or fifty agents. See if you can get four or five detailed critiques back from those agents who might say, oh, "I like this a lot, but it needs X or Y." Okay, and then if if the X or Ys are all the same kinds of notes and they're all similar, then that's something you can do. You can you can absorb and say, oh, they don't like my dialogue, or I describe my scenes too long, or I need more tension, or whatever it might be. Yeah, I did and actually. That, some... that and and that is something I've had to work on. Um, so I did have an editor that I met in that same. Um, Rocky Mountain Fiction Writers Conference that when we met, um, yeah. who, and I, I sent it to her and she gave me some really good editing uh, suggestions. Um, and, you know, not the line by line thing, but just, just overall writing. Right. But she didn't really respond to, she read the whole thing and she didn't respond to the length until I actually pressed her on that. And she said, well, yeah, it's, it's long, but She's, she gave me some praise for the writing. So Great. I hadn't really thought of breaking it down that much, Mark. And that actually, uh, that makes it 
a different story than trying to, to simply just separate these these two simultaneous um, stories. And um, that gives me something to think about. I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I can I know enough agents and editor types that if they were to get a query letter and somewhere in the one page, which is all you get, uh -huh. it's it mentions the current manuscript is over two hundred thousand words. It's going to go. They're just not going to go any further. Yeah. But if but if you're querying about, um, and I would I would recommend just say, here's my novel. It's a hundred thousand words. Yes, there's subsequent um, stories to tell, but see if you can make that novel stand alone. Okay. And, and and just just end it. Even though in your mind there's lots more to go, mm. your your initial challenge it seems to me is to get something out there so you've got a pool. A, a large audience of readers who then are eager for the next book. Okay. And, and, right. and your author's note and everything else in that first book can say, there's more to come, but you know, yeah, that's, that's helpful. That's really helpful. Yeah. That yeah. gave me a, a whole different twist than just trying to break it in half. Yeah. And so, yeah, that makes Why? sense. Yeah. You, okay. you put in so much you may put in so much work into this now just find a natural breaking point it might need a little bit of writing to wrap it up as a novel mm -hmm. um but it sounds like your writing is there yeah well thank you like you know i mean that somebody who wants to be an agent needs to agree to that too but um, yeah. <laughs> i had some good feedback on the writing so yeah. that helps that at least that keeps my interest in the game um and uh so i i i like the suggestion yeah yeah it sounds to me it sounds to me like no matter what happens you're so happy that you wrote this no matter if nothing it becomes of this in terms of public i mean it sounds like you got a lot of satisfaction out of putting this together it was it was it was um and it was uh, uh it was dark you know, it was a, a dark experience. And really what I projected to be the second book was really the, where, um, and it ties together right back to the, to the very first part, first book. Uh, readers would have to read everything in sequence in order to, to understand it, I guess. But, um, but it, it gave me the opportunity to tell a, story to emphasize uh how important it is for adoptive parents to to con to hold that they don't know what the whole story is uh in, in some domestic adoptions of course that's not true but most international adoptions that's the way it goes that it, that can be heartbreaking and we have to hold that in our love for our kids yeah wow sounds powerful sounds very powerful yeah thank you mark wow yeah wow well um i wish you well i i if you find that place and get it down to a hundred thousand hundred ten then i my next step would be i would set a number of like 40 agents or 50 agents and just okay. start querying and just don't take the rejections as anything okay. personal, just keep looking and keep looking. And and obviously networking because those personal introductions and getting a personal recommendation to an agent is really makes a huge difference. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I believe it. I believe yeah. it. Are, are you planning to come back to Colorado Gold in September? Yes, I would love to. Um yeah. I got a lot out of that. And it was, and also I, I began to try and make connections and uh, especially if I can follow up on some connections. I, I did, um, there was, there was a, there are two people. Um, there was a fiction writer and an agent that, that have worked together and they presented a couple of times at this last conference, I'm trying to remember what their, their names are. Um, Amy, it mm, doesn't matter. Yeah. But uh, yeah. anyway, I'd like to follow up on on people. I, I mean, I've got actually uh, my notes from the con 
conversation from the conference actually right next to me on my desk here too so i have a lot that i can go back to so yeah that's great that's yeah excellent very good i'm going to ask you at the end here in just a minute about to recommend one book or one writer but is but 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 that's in a second Uh, for now i want to know is there a novelist that you kind of used as a model for your for this book is there a sort of a tone or a style that you look to? Well, um, yeah, I mean, there, there are actually two books that come to mind and one uh, a lot of people will know and that's where the crawdads sing. Um, yeah, and I, I, you know, for, as a first novel of, an, of a novelist, I mean, that, I, that had that um, mixed tone, uh, right. a sort of a sense of mystery of, of what's really going on, um, but the beauty too of just the the ability to express and describe a scene in that was really good. The other, so as long as I'm at it, the other book that uh, that comes to mind is All Our Names, um, mm. and uh, and that just I thought that that was similar in um, the in the international two sort of two parallel stories that came together in that book uh and just the, um and also just the was an adoption but uh, uh you know that somebody uh adopted a name um he, when he came and just some of the, the cultural collision and struggles of yeah uh, this, this, a woman that was trying to deal with um with the man who is who had come into her life so that's another one yeah great very good well dan i am going to ask you to recommend other than those books which inspired this particular you know effort writing effort just to pass along the name of one book or one writer that is your guy or girl well, there's a book that just that uh, I, I'm reading now, and I'm really fascinated uh, by it. It's called The Return, and uh, it's a, a story about uh, uh, the son of a diplomat, um, and um, it, and um, who was um, probably murdered it i mean it isn't clear yet i haven't finished the book um uh, either in prison um in uh and uh, in africa and uh his son uh has really had to deal with the life of not really knowing what happened to his father and has developed a successful life in new york and what he's gone through to go back and reconnect with his family in Africa and what what um had then how he starts to put together stories to try and find out who knows what about what happened to his father in a in a in a very difficult time. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Well Dan, of course we wish you all the success in the world. I have a hunch that maybe the next conference will lead to a connection or something will happen between now and then, because it's January and that's, yeah. September feels like a long way off at this point. Yeah. So I certainly hope, hope, hope some sparks fly in the meantime. Thank and, you, Mark. Uh, yeah. That's really encouraging. I appreciate it. Yeah. And thank you for sharing your story on the podcast today. And um, we really appreciate it. You bet. All right. Thank you so much. 